brace yourself because in this video I'm going to be sharing with you five true stories about the paranormal and close encounters with I I don't want to say that word, YouTube doesn't like it so let's just call it the opposite of being alive. Headphones in, like and subscribe and let's jump into the first story. Enjoy. Paramedic Experience So I've been a career paramedic, but this happened when I'd only been one for five years. This has never left me to this day, and I kid you not, it happened exactly like this. I was driving home on a rural highway one rainy afternoon. It was really pouring down, and traffic had slowed to about 50 miles per hour. I was following two vehicles, and we rounded a bend in the road as a small sports car on the opposite side crossed the centre line and hit the small SUV that was leading the three of us vehicles on my side of the road. I immediately pulled over and called 911. It was a bad one. I got out to check on everyone. There was wailing coming from the SUV on the side of the road. That's always a good thing, because people are breathing. So I went down into the field, past the ditch, to check on the sports car. There were two young guys in the car. The force of the impact had driven the engine to where the front passenger seat should be. The passenger was still buckled, his crumpled hand holding onto the oh shit handle overhead. The entire section of the car shoved into the back seat area. The back of the car had peeled away, as had the passenger's top of his head. His jawbone jutted out, raw and jagged. He was clearly deceased, but I felt for a pulse anyway all while listening to the gasping, ragged, dragging breaths of the driver. No pulse on the passenger. I tried to figure out how to deal with the driver, but there was nothing I could do. The car had literally wrapped around him, and it would take an extraction team time to get him out. Listening to his dying breathing, I apologised out loud to him that I couldn't do more. I told him I was sorry to leave him, but others needed my help too. In my heart, I knew he'd never make it. So I went on to render aid where it was needed. In triage, we call it black tagging. A patient who isn't going to survive. I did what I could for the family in the SUV. Emergency medical people and fire services got to the scene and took over. The entire family had injuries, but all survived. The mother had permanent brain damage and lost an eye. But the whole day, those two guys in the red sports car stayed on my mind. That night, I was home alone and getting ready for bed, with just the bedside lamp on, and I heard something in the hallway. It got louder as it came closer down the dark hallway towards my open door. It was like a thump, drag. Thump. Drag. I absolutely froze. A broken hand curled around the frame of my doorway. And then, that kid from the passenger seat was standing there, busted up, just like he was in the car. I'm totally serious. He looked at me 
and I can't recall the exact words that he said, but it was something along the lines of, Hey, my friend wants you to know. He understands. He wants you to know he's okay. We both are. Thanks for trying. He stood there for a few more seconds, just looking at me, and then he stepped back into the shadows, let go of the door frame, and I listened to him drag back down the hallway into nothing. I turned on every damn light I could. I slept with the lights on for two full weeks. I clipped out their death notices from the paper later that week. Turns out they were both high school seniors on their way home from a wrestling tournament. Their car hydroplaned from what the investigation determined. I'd never have recognised the blonde-headed kid had he come up to me as his healthy unwrecked self. Freaked me the hell out when he came to me all busted up. I still have the newspaper clippings. I'll never forget them. Nor the ghostly visit. Anyway, that's my experience. I've seen a lot of messed up stuff in my 29 year career. But nothing quite as visceral before nor since. Mummy, I'm so cold. Ah, oh, I just remembered a good short one that is family lore. Apparently, my great-great-aunt had a child that died around two to three years old. She was devastated, of course. After the funeral, she began having reoccurring terrible dreams of her daughter coming back to her and saying, Mummy... I'm so cold. Well, I guess sometimes the deceased body bloats and doesn't fit into their clothes the way they used to. The funeral home will often cut the clothes down the back and sort of tuck them around the body in the casket so it looks like they are fully clothed. That's what they did for her little girl. And the great-great-aunt was so disturbed by her dreams that she had the body exhumed. She had her little girl fully clothed with socks and shoes and reburied, and never had the dreams again. 3.30 a.m. every night. Hi guys. So, a little background here. My mother-in-law moved out last week. To the day, actually. She was a very negative woman and caused a lot of stress in our home. Her room was next to my daughter's room, which is at the opposite end of the house to my wife and I's room. Well, to keep it short and simple, Every single night, since my mother-in-law left, my daughter has come to me at 3.30am, crying, on the dot. She was scared of someone in her room. She calls him the Cuckoo Man. She tells me that he wants to get her. Now, my daughter is three years old, so I can't help but wonder if this is something another kid from daycare told her. Anyway, I figured it was her having a hard time adjusting until I realised that it was at the same time every night. So yesterday, we told her we would put the dog's kennel in her room so she wouldn't feel alone or scared. She still woke up at 3.30am last night, but she wanted to go back to her own bed. 
I let the puppy out and put him back in his kennel, just fine. And everyone went back to sleep. Tonight, however, she didn't wake up. But the dog woke me up, crying in his kennel loudly at 3.30am. Does this sound like a coincidence? Or does it sound like a present? I could really use some advice, because I'm completely spooked. Edit. I wrote this half awake. I forgot to mention that my daughter will wake up scared and stay with us the remainder of the night. Except for the last time she woke up, when she wanted to go back to her own bed. Last night, she slept all night, just fine, and the puppy woke up. I hope that gives more context before I get attacked for parenting incorrectly. My first terrifying ghostly encounter. I've had experiences with ghosts and entities before, but it seems I've never tried to scare me. But a few nights ago, some malevolent spirits tried to scare the absolute hell out of my girlfriend and I, and they did a great job at it. It was Father's Day night. My girlfriend and I took a drive down a forest road. Down the way is a dirt parking lot that we'll pull off on to stargaze or listen to music. Nothing was out of the ordinary about that night. It wasn't a full moon, wasn't Halloween, just a seemingly normal night. Once we got to the dirt patch, my girlfriend got out of the car to open the trunk to my SUV. Before she got too close to her door, she paused, then frantically told me to turn the radio off. After a moment, she jumped back into the car and told me to book it. So I did. Her eyes were wide open and looked very frazzled. She told me she had heard footsteps drawing near. Heavy footsteps. She swore they weren't of a deer, but that they definitely sounded human. I didn't believe her at first, and we were laughing about the situation on the drive back down the road. A few minutes later, I drove around a bend and saw it. I was still laughing till I saw it. I only got a moment to see it but it looked like a man standing on the side of the road, facing me. No head, and no neck. No blood, but he was wearing tattered clothes, like rags, basically. I didn't scream, but I stepped on the pedal after that. I was absolutely terrified of that thing following us any further or appearing in the middle of the road. All I wanted to do was pull over and cry from fear, but we needed to get home so bad. We needed to get out of there. Well, a few minutes later, we got home safe. Otherwise, I wouldn't be telling you about this story. At first, I didn't think anything followed us home. But things have been kind of weird around here. The clock in my room stopped working for a few hours just after we got home. Just in case something did follow us, I got some sage today and plan on burning it around our house and in my car. I've never had to do this before. So hopefully it goes well. Wish me luck. I died once. Here is my experience.
I suffered a massive stroke, so I apologise for any errors I may make. In 2012, I had suffered a stroke that killed me. As I slipped away, I had felt an overwhelming peace come over me, like I had never felt before. Things went black. Then, I was ascending above, and I saw the city below. Next to me, I heard a voice from this orb of varied coloured lights that also had a mist coming off of it. It was a woman's voice, and she was telling me how excited she was to finally be with her family and see her mum and dad again. I started to feel unsure and told her I wasn't supposed to be here. Suddenly, I was standing in an otherworldly place that was gorgeous. All the structures and buildings were made of what looked similar to marble, but it had an iridescent colour between the marbling. The buildings were decorated with colourful stones, with gold embezzlements lining the buildings and glass fencing. I walked along the path with my arms crossed and held to my body. I felt lost and everyone around me was chatting happily with each other in these weird otherworldly clothes of satin-like linens. Some people held hands and were close and joyful with each other. This place was absolutely beautiful. I came upon an old man who was sitting near a tree and what seemed to be teaching a class with people surrounding him. Some were sitting, and others were standing. He called me over to join him. He was teaching the lessons of what life is supposed to be on Earth. What it was originally supposed to be, and how humans were supposed to be carrying for the world and the inhabitants on it. But materialism had gotten in the way, among other things. I felt an overwhelming knowledge come over me as he continued to teach his class about the world, the universe, life, and death. Everyone began to surround me, and the old man put his hand on my shoulder and he said, It's not your time yet. You will know when it is. The people from the class all came in and held me in a circle, and I was suddenly back. I opened my eyes and breathed in. I was alive and back in my earthly body. This is how I came to believe in God, and also reincarnation. I don't claim a religion because my beliefs are now a mixture of things. Unfortunately, that knowledge that was instilled into me slowly slipped away over the years, but I feel it in the back of my mind. To me, religion became several fingers pointing to the same being. I don't need a religion to dictate my relationship with God. If you're wondering, I'm now 27 and suffer residual effects that have disabled me, but I keep going. My body may not work properly, but my brain still does, and I focus on expanding my knowledge in various areas. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to see more content from me, make sure to subscribe. I upload new videos every Friday. Thank you for supporting my content, I really appreciate it. But with that being said, I will catch you guys next week in the next drawing video. I'll see you then.